Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is May 26th, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. If you notice people on the back, those are just my chase buddies here. We are out in Oklahoma right now, Weatherford, Oklahoma. We'll be out here for a few more days and hoping to get some high plains magic and some fun storm chasing here over the next few days. Taking a look at the visible satellite imagery, you can see the marine there is largely absent from the coastal areas. There is some cumulus across some of the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada there, and we may have some thunderstorm activity tomorrow. We'll look at that as we go. And we're gonna look at some interesting stuff in the extended forecast. There's a big trough down across the Pacific Ocean and some big ridging that continues to show up in the extended forecast. We'll dive into that a little bit here in a moment. And uh, don't let the rivers fool you. The, cold, the water is cold at this time of year. The swift currents can overpower any swimmer out there and uh, trees, rocks, and undercut uh, banks trap people under the surface wear your life jacket. You guys know the drill with the snow melt coming off the Sierra Nevada, the pretty good snowfall across the higher train this year. Looking at the holiday outlook here the, for tomorrow, Memorial Day. Uh, again, this is National Weather Service Sacramento. You can see the valley getting up towards 91. Foothills a little bit chillier and the mountains chillier still. Relatively speaking here, I mean, you're still looking at some uh, temperatures up into the low 80s there. Now, if we look at the mountain storms, the National Weather, Surf, Han National Weather Service Hanford, California, showing this here. And if you want to remain completely safe, wait to 30 minutes until you last hear thunder. Stay away from the tall trees. You know, stop the water activities and seek shelter in a sturdy shelter or a hardtop vehicle. Looking at uh, Southern California, you can see if you want to get away from the heat, you get out towards the coastal areas, you can see 66, 70 degrees in the coastal areas. But if you get it towards Palm Springs and Thermal, of course, you're pushing 100 degrees. San Bernardino, 83, Riverside, 80. And yeah, so pretty, you know, pretty typical stuff here where the coast is much cooler than the inland areas. And did you know today apparently is a uh, paper airplane day here, National Weather Service, Las Vegas. When, thing is, when things are a little bit boring here, they tend to seek out some of these interesting facts here as well. And now if we look at May 26th back in Southern California, strong high pressure, check that out, 115 back in 1951 for Palm Springs, 114 in Thermal. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff there, a pretty nasty heat wave going. I mean, 101 degrees is hot enough. I can imagine 115. They're back in 1951 again. Now, looking at the European uh, artificial intelligence model here from this morning, I'm going to put this into motion. You can see somewhat of a ridge here across some of the west here as we go on in through Memorial Day with some fair temperatures out there. Trough swings through the Pacific Northwest and through some of the uh, Rockies here of Canada and Montana. And then we have another transit ridge moving across the western portions of the USA. We flatten things out for a while, but then look at this trough that continues to dig out over the Pacific Ocean and huge heat dome setting up over portions of the USA and of course just how far east or west this ridge of high pressure sets up will have big implications on the temperatures here across a lot of the west coast and so if we continue off into the extended forecast that trough gets pretty darn right close as we go on into the early portion of June as some of the model runs are even showing some kind of a frontal system trying to impact the state of California we'll be watching that closely uh, we're looking way off into fantasy land at this point so it's just something Interesting to look at at this time frame here, but you know, we'll just continue to monitor it day by day. Take a look at the European artificial intelligence. We're going to scroll all the way through this here pretty quick, and we're going to look at the very end where the trough starts to dig out. There's the big storm out over the Pacific Ocean. That's something you'd see more like in November or January versus the month of June here. And you can see somewhat of a frontal system trying to drape itself across a lot of the West Coast and even including California at times. But again, we'll be revisiting that as we go day by day. Now, I want to look at the thunderstorm threat risk for tomorrow. So we're scrolling into Memorial Day. Of course, a lot of people are out there across the back country in the higher terrain. And you can see that thunderstorm activity across the Sierra Nevada. Some of even Northern California, you could get a thunderstorm or two and some lightning strikes across Nevada as well. And that goes on into the evening hours, and that'll wane as we get the, the, we'll put an end to the daytime heating there also. And we may kick off a few storms again to, on Tuesday here. You can see stronger across Nevada, maybe southern Oregon, extreme southeast Oregon, and southern Idaho. And uh, maybe one will pop off across the Sierra Nevada. We'll look at that again tomorrow, most likely. And if we take a look at wind speeds here, we're going to scroll through this. This wasn't updating earlier, but it is. It's kind of a typical regime. we got the northwest winds down the coastline here, stronger across the higher terrain in some of the desert areas. And the strongest winds usually occur in the afternoon and evening hours. So take that to account if you're out and about. And, yeah, you kind of see how the winds really pick up there as we go through Tuesday nights, uh, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday nights. Some pretty strong westerlies there across some of the peninsula ranges, the transverse ranges, now the valley areas. And, of course, the headlands can still be chilly this time of year, especially when you're in some of those exposed headlands of the strong northwest winds. And that was the same one. And if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see we've got pretty chilly water here right along the immediate coastal areas here, abnormally cool here. 
Well, you got to go off the coast a little bit here to get some of that warmer than normal water. So this was updated on May 24th. So this is something interesting to look at if you like to go out to the beach. And looking at significant wave heights, if we scroll out far enough here on the European model, you see some wind-driven waves down the coastline. And if we scroll off further here, I'm going to go out far enough to where we'll be able to see the actual wave action start to get going across the Pacific Ocean. It looks like winter time again here as we go into early June, some increased wave action there. Will that ever affect the California coastline? Uh, that's a good question. We'll have to continue to monitor that as we go. If we look at Sacramento, you can see the warm-up as we go towards the end of the week here. Look at Friday, it might be pushing 100 degrees in some of the valley areas, and then we cool back down after that. We'll, we'll see how that trends again. We can see Bob Hopers, Burbank, and you're just kind of trapped in the upper 70s here. Nice, comfortable, and very uh, you know, kind of standard temperatures for this time of year. And here's Palm Springs right around the mid-90s to some of the upper 90s here over the next week or so. And here's the six day temperature outlook. You can see above average conditions expected as we go into the earth portions of June. And then again, the Climate Prediction Center just kind of like the broad brush this with some above normal precipitation chances just because they see that trough off the coastline there. But again, take that with a grain of salt across some of California right now. That could easily change or not verify as you saw some above average potential there for California in the 8 to 14 days. There's something similar here as well. This goes through June 9th. And again, kind of a heat dome looks like it may set up across some of the Intermountain West. And they got that broad brush there again for some above average precip across a lot of the West Coast. But again, you got to really take that with a grain of salt at this time range. But anyway, yeah, I'll be out here chasing the next few days. Um, actually, uh, should I try to bring this up? Yeah, let's go to the Twitter page here and I'm going to show you guys what I got here yesterday close the messages here and we're going to scroll down and this is a tornado we saw yesterday so today uh, yesterday was a successful day today was a down day we're going to try to chase a little bit tomorrow and see how that goes but it should pick up pick up here for tuesday on in through the end of the week and possibly in through next weekend here but yeah we saw this just south of wichita falls uh, uh texas yesterday so pretty interesting stuff there were some actually some deadly tornadoes that moved across portions of texas oklahoma last night as well but anyway i hope you guys are having a good day out there hopefully you enjoy your memorial day tomorrow uh, i'll try to do another briefing tomorrow we'll see how it goes if we're not too busy i will probably put one out as well but i definitely wanted to get one out today for the memorial memorial day update so anyway uh yeah click like and subscribe we'll do this again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then